Hi, my name is Jane and I'm the owner and lead designer of Still Carnations, an event floral studio based here in Los Angeles. Today we're here with Mayesh to talk about some 2022 floral design trends and what we could potentially expect coming into the new year. With a lot of postponed events resuming in 2022, I feel like this is really the beginning of the new Roaring Twenties. And as a part of that, we might see brighter colors, contrasting, saturated hues, and maybe instead of analogous color palettes like rust with blush and mustard, we might see complementary color palettes like blues with yellows and oranges, creating a little more color contrast and unexpected palettes. Another thing that we're facing as florists coming into 2022 is a lot of supply chain shortages and unavailability of product. You know, farmers are still recovering, shipping is a nightmare. So I think coming into the new year, we can expect to see designs that are based more around seasonally available products and what's in season locally right at that moment and letting the design dictate based on that. I also think that when you base your floral design on seasonally available product and what's looking the best at that moment, it really makes your event stand out from the rest because you're using product that may not be available in the fall or in a different part of the country and that really creates a unique once in a lifetime event. And so in order to celebrate some of these trends that we can look forward to, I'm going to be doing a demo of an alternative to a traditional ceremony arch, which is going to be a meadow uh, with organic shapes that the couple would stand at at the altar and share with you some of the mechanics that we would use to make that happen. So right now, we're going to be building the base to what is going to be our ceremony nest. And the reason why we have this wooden board and not just the design tray is because with just the design tray, we once we place it, let's say, on like a beautiful ceremony lawn, we add product to it and it may tip forward or backward and we want to stabilize it. So that's why I have this board right here. I just got this cut at Home Depot and I'm going to be making our base mechanics for our nest. Our tried and true handy dandy chicken wire. We're going to just bend it into a ball shape, making sure that there's multiple levels of chicken wire. I mean, you all know this if you're watching this. This is, <laughs> this is our go-to mechanic. I'm just bending, bending, making sure that I don't squish it too much because we want that height so that the product can stand tall. So once that's kind of in there, I'm going to secure it with our trusty waterproof tape, going all the way around. So once that's on there, what I wanna do is take another piece of chicken wire and use that to secure this whole thing down onto the board because if this is on the ground, I don't want to see any of the design tray. I want it to feel like the meadow is just growing out from the ground. I don't want to see any of this. And so we're going to make sure that the chicken wire is everywhere so that we can have product coming forward, coming off to the side. So it just looks like it's effortlessly growing out of the ground. And that's where our staple gun comes in because you don't want things falling apart when you're on site. And this is all things that I would prep in advance. So building the base can happen earlier in the week if you have a weekend wedding. And that's just one less thing to worry about when you're in production mode. And so I think like an alternative to this is using floral foam, but we try to avoid that as much as possible. And using this chicken wire to the board method really helps us give that look, that illusion, without using foam. Okay, so that's our base, ready for some flowers. 
so now that we have our mechanic set, we can add some of our base material. So this one's going to feel very meadowy, textural, and we're gonna be using this blue ice, pine, some white limonium, and forsythia branches, um, which are some of my favorite because they have such cute flowers on them. So we're gonna be building the base out with our blue ice. And this again harkens back to using seasonal materials to make your event feel extra unique. So now we have our base flowers in our structure. We're going to be using maybe six of these structures to really create that ceremony nest. This is all stuff that can be prepped ahead of time, the day before the event, and that way when you get on site, you're not stressing for time. You just have to put in the flourishing touches, which is what we'll do next. Alrighty, so now I'm just placing the final base to form this semicircle. And then after that, all there's to do is add some flourishing touches like this amazing clematis pod to give it those final accents and create some airy movement. I also added some white clematis and some blue carnations for that extra little pop. So thank you for joining me um, while I demonstrate how I build a ceremony nest. And I want to say thank you to Mayesh for supplying all these gorgeous flowers for the video today. And I'll see you all next month for February's video.